This video was edited 100% in VR inside the Quest 3. I've been editing videos for nearly 20 years now, but never have I edited a video entirely inside a VR headset. And as someone who is obsessed with productivity and doing things better and faster, I'm always looking for new and improved ways to create content. So today I'll be putting video editing in VR to the test. I'll be using my Sony a7S III and microphone setup as usual. And yes, right now I'm using the Quest 3 as a B-roll camera because why not? I'll be editing at my desk as usual. However, I'm not doing it through the pass-through cameras since the quality is quite low and there's no real advantage to doing this. Instead, I'll be using the free Immersed app, which wirelessly connects to your computer and streams your desktop screen to the Quest 3. It lets you create multiple monitors for better multitasking. And even cooler, it can see your real keyboard and creates a simulated one over the top so when you press it, the buttons are where they should be. Now there are two ways of connecting the Quest 3 to your computer. The first way is wirelessly, which is done through the app. The second way is through a USB-C cable, which has the advantage of A, a faster connection, therefore less lag, and B, you can charge the headset while you're editing, which for editing, which usually lasts a few hours, is going to be essential. Once you've opened up the Immersed app, there are multiple different environments you can choose from that create a very strong sense of immersion, being 3D generated environments that have a sense of depth to them. This makes it feel more like you're actually sitting in a room, albeit a digital one. I'm gonna go for the Alpine Chalet. This one has a really cool sense of atmosphere, but it's also not too distracting that it will stop me from working. You can reposition the monitors any way you like in the room by pressing the trigger button and moving around to whichever position you like. The free Immersed account comes with three monitors that you can put in whichever configuration you like, either side by side or put them above and below the main monitor if you prefer. It will take a bit of fine tuning at first to get a setup you're happy with. I did find though that screen visibility wasn't great so I had to bring the monitor much closer to me, nearly up to my nose it felt like, even though in reality it was more like a meter away. I feel like this gave me best visibility of all the controls of Adobe Premiere. While there are a few different resolutions you can choose from, this didn't seem to increase the actual monitor quality but just rather the screen size within the rectangular box, which meant everything was at the same level of sharpness as even the lower resolutions. I don't normally work with multiple monitors in real life so I decided to get creative and find a configuration that would be really hard to achieve in real life like putting the two secondary screens on an angle diagonally above the main monitor. Yeah let's give this a go. So now I'm using my actual mouse to interact with Premiere and if you're using a software like this where you can pull apart the tabs and reposition them elsewhere you can do this in the same way you would do it for a real monitor by clicking and dragging it across, then resizing it to full screen of the second monitor. So I put the essential graphics panel and main project window in my two secondary monitors. What is super cool about this app is that it has a keyboard and it's detected the real life location of my keyboard and it superimposes the pass through on top of the digital keyboard, creating a half real, half virtual experience. However, I did find that it kept switching between my virtual hands and real ones, which did become distracting after a while. Also, when the digital hands come up, they're not always perfectly in sync with your real hands. And if you're not yet a perfect touch typer, I know I can admit I'm not, this does make it hard to identify individual keys that you frequently use for editing. What you can do to fix this, however, is in the keyboard settings, choose prefer opaque. And what this does is it keeps the real life version of your keyboard there permanently, so your digital hands don't always cover the letters. So from having edited the video up to this point, I've got a few observations. Firstly, in terms of comfort, it was comfortable enough, but after 40 minutes of editing, I did feel the face pad pressing on my face, starting to get uncomfortable. I feel like in order to do this going forward, I will need to get the Quest 3 Elite strap to make it much more comfortable. It's not deal breaking levels of discomfort, but it does get a little bit uncomfortable. Another thing is sometimes when I'm editing, I like to lean into the monitor to see finer details. For example, if a clip is out of sync, which the Quest 3 videos are about roughly 10 frames out of sync, you need to resync them. And to do that, it's not always clear since the cameras aren't super clear. So you've got to go in close look at the mouth, look at the audio track and sync them up. I couldn't do that with the quality of the Quest 3. So I don't know if that section of the video 
will perfectly be in sync. I found with video editing, the multiple screens ended up being more of a hindrance than a help. So I got rid of the second two so I could keep everything directly in front of me on one screen. This helped keep things simple and speed up editing. When I first started the edit, I found the process a bit clunky and hard to get pinpoint precision over cuts and timeline navigation. However, as I got into it gradually, I got used to it and I found bringing the screen closer and really getting the right distance combined with the right IPD set on the Quest 3. This helped the editing experience feel much more normal and lifelike. It was a little bit off-putting within Premiere. I'm not sure if it's just Premiere or all programs, but whenever I selected a tool like the pen tool, the cursor doesn't convert to the pen tool when viewed through the Quest 3. So it's hard to always keep track of which tool you're using since there's no immediate cursor change. All right, now let's give color correction a go. And this will be an interesting test of how accurate the colors are within the Quest 3's display compared to what I'd see on my computer screen. So I'm just gonna go by eye here as I normally would when color correcting my videos. And we'll see if the colors look any decent once I've finished and exported. I've got to admit, I'm not feeling a huge level of confidence here. I feel like I'm editing blind a bit. Although I guess this is a simulation of my computer screen. So the colors should be somewhat similar. Okay, I think I'm happy with that. Let's take a look at before and after. Before, after, yeah, that looks pretty good. Definitely better than before. Okay, time to take an editing break and look out the window and think long and hard about my life and where it all went wrong. That fire looks nice and warm. I'm just wondering where the bathroom is in here because I gotta go. Anyway, back to work. The rest of the video was pretty easy to edit. All text graphics I used are templates that I just dragged and dropped and resized to fit the video. And I did some basic audio editing with the help of Premiere combined with manually adjusting the curves of some louder clips. Towards the end of the edit, I also decided to shift the screen screen up a bit so the timeline is more or less in line with my eyes since when you've been editing long enough you're looking mostly at the timeline and not so much at the viewer and I found having this at eye level to be really helpful and something I couldn't do with my Mac monitor since my desk is down here and it's kind of hard to prop it up this high. And this is a cool editing experience that I've never had before. I'm sitting in my office chair and leaning back and it's kind of like looking up at a cinema screen. So I would say that it does have that advantage over a traditional computer monitor since it can be easily moved and manipulated whereas a real life monitor can't. If you're wondering whether you can edit 360 videos for VR, you using Immersed and Adobe Premiere. Yes, you can, but it's not super easy. While you can view them with your mouse and look around, connecting the Quest 3 to Premiere isn't a simple process, unfortunately, since Adobe haven't really developed this feature much in the past few years, and it's still not compatible with all headsets and computers. So yeah, my edits in this video did end up looking very similar to how they look when editing on a computer. So the experiment of whether you can edit videos in VR was a success, but should you? Well, while I do think VR is a truly incredible medium that has to be seen to believed, I don't think it makes me more productive, at least yet. I'm usually a fast editor and I found myself editing more slowly in VR, just getting the feel for it, getting the hang of it. And there was no real benefit to doing it other than it being a really cool experience. And that was great, it was fun, but it didn't make me more productive. The main issue I had with this workflow was the screen resolution. You really notice it when putting on the headset, then taking it off and you see the edit on your computer and it's so much sharper on the monitor than in the headset. And this is, I think you can really underestimate how important this is with video editing. You need every pixel you can get. It makes menus clearer, it makes your footage clearer, and just everything is enhanced by having more resolution. Although I would say it was decent and could be an okay option for shorter videos like this one, but no longer. Also, I found I had to take breaks throughout the day to take the headset off and go outside and get some sunlight. It can start feeling like you're in a dark cave when you take the headset on and off and you realize you haven't been exposed to daylight. So with editing in VR, you probably will need to take breaks and leave the room to get some fresh air and light. That said, I'll definitely be editing videos in the future in VR. So if you want to find out how that goes and how the technology evolves, then subscribe down below 
and I'll let you know if there's any new innovations or anything that will improve this workflow. What are your thoughts in editing in VR and productivity in VR? Are we yet at a point where it's better doing some things in VR or is everything still better done in real life? Now, if you've just picked up a Quest 3 and you're keen to get up and running with it ASAP, then check out this video here to get 10 tips in less than two minutes that will get you started with this awesome headset.